Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really fun match for you here. I'm using one of my favorite teams I've used in a while, and it also takes advantage of some of my favorite mechanics in the game. It's all around a good time. Listen, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. It's free, it only takes you a second, and you can help me reach my goal of 300k. And I do appreciate the support. Let's get into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to end up leading off with the Umbreon as I toss out the OG Dustbuster. Furt is back and better than ever, baby. And honestly, Umbreon is kind of a problem to my team. So, I decide to go ahead and frisk him, feel him up, find its leftovers, and then I'm like, you know what? I'll be taking those. I'm going to go for the Trick Turn 1 and give this thing a Choice Scarf. What that's going to do is essentially just render this thing relatively useless when Umbreon can't switch up its moves. Uh, it's not as much of a defensive threat, plus it doesn't have much offensive power. So... I steal this dude's lunch, and then he goes for the Thunder Wave and misses. So I'm out here stealing lunch and dodging attacks. Furret is out here doing exactly what we need it to do. Um, and now we know that this thing is locked into Thunder Wave. So I don't really want Furret to be paralyzed. Plus, I'd like to go ahead and make this battlefield a little bit more yellow. So I switch into the Pink Kirch. Now this thing is basically on this team because there's a couple of members uh, that do take advantage of the Electric Surge. So the Electric Train does get set up here. We piss all over the place, and now the Umbreon is actually going to also switch out as well. So we got a little bit of a double switch action as they are going to end up bringing in the Lucario. So I'm defensive and I know I can kind of take this thing one-on-one -on -one relatively. I don't really want it to start setting up Swords Dances, which is kind of what I'm thinking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right for the Thunderbolt with the boosted damage um, on the Electric Terrain field. It should be enough to be a nice little two-hit KO as they show me it's actually going to be an Aura Sphere special attacking Lucario. So... That hurts quite a bit, and uh, a Thunderbolt is actually going to get some solid chip on this thing. So, I do want to tuck the Pink Kirchen in the back pocket, which would probably hurt. Uh, but the idea is to kind of conserve this thing so I can set up the Electric Terrain later. It's really nice because it enables Raichu with the Surge Surfer, and you're also going to see that it also helps out uh, the Drift Blum here with the Electric Seed. So, uh, knowing that they're likely just going to go for another fighting move here, I'm just going to go right into the Drift Blim. One of my favorite Pokemon to, to use, honestly, this thing is always so much fun. There's a lot of different things you can do with it, but lately, Electric Seed and the Electric Terrain is always a fun time, because what that does is it gives you a nice little defense boost, uses up your item, uh, and then also activates your Unburden ability. So now I am about fast as hell, and at this point, I'm just going to go for a Shadow Ball, knowing that it knocks out Lucario, and there's not a whole lot that wants to deal with this thing, but the one Pokemon they do have that can deal with it is, of course, uh, the damn Umbreon. So, Umbreon does come in here, and knowing that this thing is Choice Scarf, it just kind of comes down to what this thing is going to be working with in terms of damage. So, I go for the Shadow Ball, of course, doesn't do anything, but what I do get is also a little special defense drop. So, uh, that actually kind of makes this manageable as a 1v1, depending on what they decide to go for. So, I'm going to Air Slash, trying to get some cheeky flinches, but uh, it, it does a decent bit of damage as they just go for a Snarl. Uh, which is unfortunate, because it actually <laughs> drops my special attack. And now we find ourselves in a situation where I could potentially actually win this matchup. So, what I want to do is I want to keep Drift Blim alive enough to be able to take advantage of... Um, the Destiny Bond later on. So this thing goes for another Snarl, and it's looking like after a special attack, it could be a potential roll on whether or not Umbreon goes down. I could also, again, still get flinches with the Air Slash. Uh, I'm gonna go for it. I got Cool Whip on my head, and that does take out the Umbreon with a crit, so that is honestly pretty lucky, but you love to see it, and uh, at this point, Umbreon being down is great, because now, with my Unburdened ability, Drift Limb is actually faster than everything. Even a Choice Scarf Star After. So Star After comes in thinking they're just going to be able to scarf out speed, but jokes on them, I go for the Destiny Bond, basically bait them to kill me, and uh, <laughs> hope to take it down with me. That is exactly what happens, as the Brave Bird does take out the Drift Blim, but in the process, we're able to take out the Umbreon and the Star Raptor, which is amazing. Star Raptor is a huge threat out of the way, and Drift Blim is able to kind of do its thing. This is a little bit of a different Drift Blim that I normally use. A lot of the time I go acrobatics um, with the Electric Seed, but sometimes we just switch it up. So now we have an empty battlefield and also a regularly colored battlefield as the electric train goes away. But what I can do is just go right back uh, into Young Lego, the pointiest Lego you do not want to step on in the middle of the night as they bring in the Mimikyu. So Mimikyu is always a threat. Whenever an opponent has a Mimikyu, you're pretty much in danger to be swept because of this thing's ability with the disguise. It can always get up a free pretty much a Swords Dance, and uh, it's just an annoying Pokemon. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna go for a Memento, hoping that potentially they go for a Swords Dance or something like that. Um, they actually end up just knocking me out with the Play Rough. Uh, so Pink Urchin goes down, and I just kinda have to deal with the Electric Train that I have, and we do see that this thing is Life Orb. So, here's the plan. I'm gonna go into Florges. I can't really use 
Raichu yet because obviously its disguise is not broken, plus it has the Shadow Sneak. And uh, I, I decided to go in the floor just because I know I can just basically break this thing's, um, this thing's disguise. As they do go for that Swords Dance, but as soon as this disguise is broken, uh, essentially I do have a Mon in the back that should be able to take care of it. So, floor just kind of has to just take one for the team here. We get some, uh, some big old Moonblast action, but you know, all it does is just kind of break this thing's neck. And uh, he's just he's just a little shroomish under there, just kind of chilling. So, essentially at plus two, I have nothing that can switch into this thing, and Floor just just kind of has to go down to a play rough. So, of course that does knock me out, but we did exactly what we needed to do, and that was basically just knocking this thing's head off to the point where now, uh, Choice Scarf Star Raptor can come in, and a Brave Bird should knock this thing out. The reason why we go Star Raptor is just because. Obviously, we are immune to the Shadow Sneak priority, and that's kind of the, the main situation here. And we can hit hard enough uh, with a nice little little Reckless bl Brave Bird to finish this thing off. So, Mimic U is out of the way, and that is a Crisis Averted because I hate dealing with this thing. And um, now they got three Pokemon left. They're going to be working with uh, the Slowbro, they have the Lucario, and a big fat Jelly Bean in the form of Belly Bolt. So, I take a little bit of recoil damage, but that is fine, and now in comes the Belly Bolt. Of course, Star Raptor cannot 1v1 this thing, and I don't have a whole lot of switches here, but it looks like it's time for Furret to see what I can do against this thing. So, the good news is about Furret is I can actually come in, and of course, you know, with this thing's Frisk ability, we kind of just feel this homeboy up and be like, hey, what do you what do you got over here? Anything, anything that I want? We Frisk, we find it Citrus Berry, and I think, yeah, you know, I'd prefer actually if you didn't have that. So, we come in, we take a Charge Beam in the Electric Terrain, it does boost it a bit. Also gives him a special attack boost. Um, but uh, I'm still munching on Umbreon's leftovers over here, and I'm thinking I'm just gonna go for the knockoff essentially. I get rid of the Citrus Berry, a little bit of chip damage here, and then uh, I should be able to take care of the Belly Bolt with the uh, Lolan Raichu. So I go for that knockoff, I say hey, I found your Berry, but I prefer it if that was on the ground. Um, but in the process, we actually give it Electromorphosis, and it's got a special attack boost, and it's in the Electric Terrain, and Belly Bolt just absolutely fries the shit out of Furret. So, you hate to see it, but sometimes it needs to be done because now that opens the door for Raichu to come in. And uh, I can basically, I know I can take pretty much any attack that uh, the Belly Bolt wants to throw at me here. And it kind of just depends on whether or not I want to set up the Nasty Plot. Um, unfortunately, I come in, I'm Surge Surfing out here with my ability, which doubles your speed on Electric Terrain. However, I think there's only two turns left of it. So I'm going to end up going for the Nasty Plot knowing that... Uh, this thing definitely, it can't one-shot me here. So I go for that Nasty Plot, get that big old special attack boost. As this thing goes for the Muddy Water, it actually misses. So the RNG's been kind of annoying, but honestly that one didn't really matter. Um, plus one Muddy Water from Belly Bolt does around 45% to Raichu. So we're still sitting nice. And now at the after the Nasty Plot, a Psychic is going to be able to take care of big old Belly Bolt. And now at this point, Raichu is positioned even without the Electric Terrain as it is going to disappear. Uh, I'm actually faster than the entirety of their team. So... Electricity goes away once again, no more pink urchin to set that back up, but Raichu is still surfing on these hoes regardless. I am actually still faster, so Lucario is going to go down to a Thunderbolt here. And honestly, Alolan Raichu is one of my favorite Pokemon to use. It's It's got the dual stab with the Psychic and Electric. Uh, it's super fast, especially in Electric Terrain, you pretty much outspeed everything. You get access to Nasty Plot, and uh, all around, just a, a pretty cool little fella. So the last Pokemon is going to be Slowbro here, and... Uh, we're having a Slowpoke Tail for dinner tonight because uh, a Thunderbolt is going to absolutely demolish my dude Paul. And sometimes you hate to do it, but it is what it is. I am actually going to go for that Terra Electric because I haven't used my Terra yet. Just to get uh, <laughs> extra damage to ensure that this Slowpoke has no way of somehow leaving this shit at all. I also, I go for the Terra Electric just because I want to put the light bulb on my head and look goofy as hell while doing it. Plus just giving basically <laughs> extra damage. So, you know, Thunderbolt does take care of the Paul. And that is going to be the end of the match. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this. Also, if there's any Pokemon you want to see me use, uh, do leave a comment. I'm trying to get around to all of the requests. But uh, having fun in the process doing it. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.